May the Lord give you his peace. A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints by Marion Habig, September 2nd. Blessed John Francis Porte, Apollinaris Morel, Seravin Geralt, and John Baptist Triquereye. Martyrs, First and Third Orders. Particularly every page in the history of the French Revolution is stained with blood. What is known in history as the Carmelite Massacre of 1792 added nearly 200 victims to this noble company of martyrs. They were all priests, secular and religious, refused to take the schismatic oath and had been imprisoned in the church attached to the Carmelite Monastery in Paris. Among these priests were a conventual, a Capuchin, and a member of the Third Order Regular. John Francis Brute was born in the town of Rambra Villers in Lorraine. At the age of 16, he joined the Franciscans at Nancy, and there he also pronounced his solemn vows. In due time, he was ordained a priest and for some time taught theology to the younger members of the order. He was at one time also superior of his convent. After Pope Clement XIV, formerly a conventual fri friar, had ordered the merging of the province of the Franciscans, to which John Francis belonged with the conventuals, Father John Francis was placed in charge of the large convent in Paris and encouraged his brothers to practice strict observance of the rule. His zeal for souls was outstanding and he zealously guarded the rights of the church in his troubled period of history. When the French Revolution broke out, he was reported for permitting his priests to exercise their functions after they refused to take the infamous oath required by the government, and which was a viral denial of their faith. He was arrested and held captive with other priests in the convent of the Carmelites. His constancy in refusing to take the sacrilegious oath won for him a cruel martyrdom on September 2nd, 1792. Apollinar Suposat, who was John James Morel before his entrance into religion, was born near Freiburg in Switzerland in 1739 and received his education from the Jesuits. In 1762, he joined the Capuchins in Zog and before long became a prominent preacher, a much sought confessor and an eminent instructor of the young clerics of the order. He impressed on their minds the truth that piety and learning are the two eyes of a priest, and humility was a dominating virtue in his life. In 1788, he was to be sent to the East as a missionary, and so he paused at Paris to study Oriental languages in preparation for his new appointment. But the French Revolution broke out while he was there, and because he steadfastly refused to take the oath of allegiance, he too was imprisoned in the Carmelite convent and suffered a cruel martyrdom on September 2nd, 1792. The priest of the Third Order Regular was Blessed Seravin, formerly George Geralt, was undaunted courage merited the grace to be numbered among the martyrs of Christ. He was born at Rowan in Normandy and early in life joined the Third Order Regular of St. Francis. Because of his eminent mental gifts, he was chosen a superior of his order. In the exercise of his priestly duties, he displayed marked zeal for souls. And as a chaplain of the convent of St. Elizabeth in Paris, he was a prudent director in the ways of religious perfection. He was also summoned to take the civil oath, and upon his refusal to do this, he was seized and confined in the Carmelite convent, where so many other confessors of Christ were being detained. On September 2nd, while he was saying his office in the convent garden, the raving assassins made him the first victim of their cruel slaughter. These three members of the Franciscan order, together with 182 other servants of God who suffered martyrdom at this time, were suddenly beatified by Pope Pius XI. Blessed John Baptist was born in 1737 at Laval, France. At a very young age, he joined the Order of Friars Minor Conventual in the Friary of Olonne, where he remained serving also as superior until 1778. He was then assigned as chaplain and confessor of the Poor Clares, first at St. Elizabeth in Nantes, then at Montmorillon, and finally at the monastery in Boron, 
near Chateau Gauthier in the Diocese of Laval. Here it was that he fell victim to the French Revolution. He refused to take the oath prescribed by the civil constitutions of the clergy, 1791. Later, he refused to take the atheistic oath, emphatically called the oath of liberal, the oath of liberty, equality. On January 5th, 1793, he was imprisoned in a former Port Clare convent named Patience. The following is a transcript of the trial record when Blessed John appeared before the Committee of the Revolution. The President. Have you taken the oath of 1791? Father John. No. President. The oath of liberty, equality. Father John. No citizen. When it was, imp when it was imposed, I was sick in bed. At this point, the public accuser and apostate priest interrupted. That is no reason. I was sick too, but I had the registry brought to my bedside and I signed the oath with my own hand. Father John. Citizen, I am a son of St. Francis of Assisi. In virtue of my status, I am obliged to be dead to the things of this world. Hence, I am not aware of its laws. My entire purpose in life is to pray for my fatherland, and this I have not failed to do. The apostate priest. You are not here to preach us sermons. From the time you were no longer chaplain to the nuns and lacked a livelihood, who supported you? Father John. Citizen, the charity of the faithful. Father John Baptist then demanded an explanation of the oath required of him. President. The oath which we demand of you is to be faithful to the Republic, not to profess any religion, not even the Catholic, which is your religion, surely. Father John. Ah, in that case, no. I shall be faithful to Jesus Christ unto my very last breath. The courageous friar was condemned to death and promptly guillotined in a public square of Laval on January 21st, 1794, in the company of 13 diocesan priests. Father John Baptist was one of 19 martyrs of the French Revolution who were beatified by Pope Pius XII on June 19th, 1955 on strengthening our faith. Faith, our greatest treasure, is a free gift of God which can be lost if we do not properly appreciate it and persevere and strengthen it in a pure and humble heart. To do this, we must first of all form a philosophy of life which is in accordance with the truths of the faith, that is, with the gospel. As our divine Savior preached it and lived it, this is all the more necessary because we are living in an atmosphere which is hostile to the faith, or at least cold and indifferent to it. The ideas of the world expounded in, this, in books and periodicals are opposed to the principles of faith. See to it, St. Paul warns us, that no one deceives you by philosophy and vain deceit, according to the elements of the world and not according to Christ. To have a strong and firm faith, we must also conform our conduct with the principles of the faith. Nothing weakens faith so much as unchecked passions, sinful habits, and a life that is at variance with what one professes with his lips. Faith without works, according to St. John, is dead itself. It is useless. On the other hand, if we live our faith, it is like a divine soil in which we have struck roots, a soil whose energies we draw up into ourselves and make our own, and through which we become transformed into true Christians. To walk in the light of faith and to live a life of, in accordance with our faith, our faith must be fostered above all by prayer and meditation. When he rose from meditation, St. Leonard of Port Maurice used to say, I return from the land of faith. To meditate means to ponder on the realities of faith, to reflect on the words and example of the Savior until the mind is enlightened and the heart enkindled. It means to judge our own life in the light of faith and to transform it according to faith. By prayer we obtain the graces to live our faith. Prayer is the language of faith, the pulse beat and gouge of faith. A plant will wither unless it is watered. So also our faith will dry up unless prayer brings 
down upon it the celestial dew of grace. St. Francis and the first friars had such a strong and living faith because they fostered it by a life of prayer. They passed their time, wrote St. Bonaventure, in continual prayer, contemplating, instead of books, the cross of Christ, by day and by night, after the example of their father, being instructed continually by his discourse on the cross of Christ. Prayer of the Church Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may worthily obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy upon you. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pax Bonum.